purpose of this video is to explore Genesis 1.1 in the beginning um, <clears throat> in light of M theory and modern um, cosmology and physics. This is part of my series on scientific foreknowledge in the Bible and um, I'm going to um, go through as much of the Bible as I can over over time. Right now I want to start at the very beginning with Genesis 1.1 Although before I read Genesis 1-1, I want to read um, a passage in Exodus 33-20 um, where Moses uh, is having conversation with God. He wants to see a God face to face. Well, God says, no man can look upon me and live. Now, this is going to tie into um, the whole M theory thing quite a bit. And what I'm, the model I'm presenting in terms of God's method of, of creating. And the reason I say that is because you can't look upon God and live in His full glory, because you would be radiated to death. I mean, it's just too much radiation. That's it's, it's that simple. I mean, it's, it's just a simple physics fact of physics. So I mean, if God is Almighty, and that means He's all powerful then you can't come into his presence without being destroyed. So in order for God to um, make provision, um, he has to tone down his, his power. He has to, to um, withhold or restrain his power. And this is the creation story. This is what Genesis 1-1, I believe, is all about. Now let me read that passage. This is my my Pharisee Bible, big and heavy, and um, of course it's got the Hebrew and the Greek. All right. Now <clears throat> says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, let's just stop there. Okay, now we got to define some of the terms. Okay, I began to define God. We began to define God, all powerful and so forth. But let's discuss this term beginning. The beginning of what? I think that, I, you know, if you look at the uh, meaning of the Hebrew word, it almost reads as if God is saying, um, to begin with, let's look at this, this simple fact, God created the heavens and the earth. The idea that there was no time before God um, it doesn't make sense, okay? God had plenty of time, and I don't mean he experiences time the way we do. God being an infinitely dimensional, or at least n-dimensional being, has the three dimensions of time opened up to him. We're used to one dimension of time, the present, and it's being um, incremented from the past to the future. We don't experience the past, present, future simultaneously. Well, the Bible indicates that God does, and that would give him what we would call an eternal state. It makes sense if you look at it scientifically and not mystically. Okay, Space, likewise, was not created at, at Genesis 1.1. Where would you put it? God already was everything. Is God all in all or not? Or did he become all in all after he created the, the universe? Did God need to create the universe? in order to realize himself? No. God is plenty sufficient without us or the creation of what we, the universe because everything already existed. Now, what didn't exist was a provision for us. Remember Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Well, Genesis is talking about creating in the sense that God provided for us an environment that we could live in and not be destroyed by radiation. It's that simple. Now, I want to get into the M theory aspects of it <clears throat> because dimensionality is important here. But before I do that, let me read another another verse, um, a couple verses from the Bible because this is going to help support my views. I understand my views are not traditional. Okay, doesn't mean they're not biblical. They're not traditional. 
they're very biblical. Now I want to go on to read um, Psalms 19, 1 through 4 to give you a further sense of what I mean by provision. Okay. <clears throat> give me a second here. I'm going to look this up. Psalms 19, 1 through 4. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the expanse inscribes his handiwork. Day by day they pour forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, where their voice is not heard. The measuring line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set up a dwelling place for the sun. So see this, this idea of God providing a dwelling place. And calling that creation is is biblically sound, okay. And and he needed to create um, for us a place that would be uh, inhabitable for finite beings. We're not infinite. We don't have um, the the wherewithal, the mechanism, the mechanics, uh, whatever you want to call it, the provisions that would allow us. Um, to survive in his and God's environment. Here I have a sketch here. I actually got some whiteboard action going on there. Um, I guess it doesn't matter which way I have that that infinite sign if it's up there or over here. Um, but basically what this represents is a slice of um, um, orth, uh, orthogonal dimensionality. Each one of those um, represents uh, a degree of freedom for God. This would be just one two-dimensional slice in an infinite volume. Okay, it's very simple. I mean, it's just representing the um, dimensions, um, intersecting at right angles. Um, and it shows you, though, however, that if this is God's um, dwelling place and His reality, there isn't anywhere else. Where else is there? Where is he going to put a heaven and an earth? If he's to create a heaven and earth, where are you going to put it? There's nowhere to put it. Is there every, God's already everywhere. He's omnipresent. He was omnipresent before the creation. He's omnipresent after the creation. Now, I wanted to show you that simple one because now I want to <laughs> reveal my matrix um, model of dimensionality and what God did for us in order to provide a place for us to to exist. Um, it's as as the ancient poet said is one of the few secular poets that were quoted in the Bible uh, in him we live and move and have our being. So God provided in himself an environment that would that would um, enable us to survive because we're finite beings and we would um, we would have fried in the uh, in, in the gamma rays and the and the um, and so forth. <laughs> okay, so what what I'm showing you here this is a, um, this could model the entire universe, or it could model just as well um, Planck's a length of 10 to the minus 33 centimeters, which for all practical purposes would be considered omnipresent. So this is what we refine in terms of how the dimensions are intersecting um, at the matrices between the place where you see the 24, that's where the angels dwell, and where you see the 12, that's where we are. Now you see there's an open, the four um, lines that go all the way through the inner circle are, are four open dimensions, three space and one time. The um, the little uh, dimensions that, that peek into our environment um, are what we find at, at the quantum level and it's what gives uh, the characteristics to um, the, the strange behavior of particles um, uh, in the quantum level. Now I'm going to um, probably slow this down a bit and, and make several videos in order to get all these points across. But basically what's happening, God is withholding his power in, these, in, these, in this um, format um, and um, it's what scientists call renormalization. 
Okay, that's how scientists get around it. But I'm going to um, come back in a couple minutes with another video, um, and um, we're going to get further and go further and further into this uh, in terms of the details of the quantum of the quantum level of this model. So I hope you uh, are enjoying this. I'm having a good time myself. <laughs>